A very pleasant day to all. Today I, Akshi Sharma, is going to provide you with the knowledge of single complete denture, which is a part of prosthodontics. Single complete denture, as the name signifies, it means a complete denture of either the maxilla or the mandible, that is a single arch. Like in this figure, you can see the complete denture of a maxilla, whereas the mandible contains a fixed prosthesis plus natural dentition or posteriorly. What we are going to discuss here is definition, indications, diagnosis and treatment planning, mouth preparation technique for occlusal plane correction, impressions and jaw relations, teeth selection, balance setting, prine insertion recall and maintenance and complications. Definition A single complete denture is a complete denture that occludes against some or all of the natural teeth of fixed restoration or a previously constructed removable partial denture or a complete denture. That means a single complete denture is made to occlude with either natural dentition or fixed prosthesis or removable prosthesis or an old partially removable or complete denture and what are the indications where we should use single complete denture as an option number one occlude to natural teeth as said before occlude to partially edentulous arch replaced by fixed partial denture occlude to partially edentulous arch replaced by removable partial denture and number four occlude to an existing complete denture Mouth preparation for dentulous arch. Now, how we are going to prepare mouth of a dentulous arch? There are four techniques. Number one is Swenson technique. Number two is Yorkstar's technique. Number three is Bruce technique. And number four is Boucher's technique. In the mouth preparation, we do occlusal plane correction. Occlusal plane correction is usually indicated for malpose teeth, severely tipped teeth, then supra erupted teeth, irregular occlusion plane or less space for teeth. These all are so obvious if an opposing teeth is missing or if an opposing arch containing the teeth are ideal. Now Swenson technique what does it include of? Here the maxillary and mandibular cast are mounted with an acceptable vertical dimension and centric relation. Then the teeth are arranged and the occlusal discrepancies are corrected and marked with pencil on the diagnostic cast so as the perfect occlusion comes into guidance. With the mark of the pencil as a guide, the natural teeth are modified in the patient's mouth. This includes the Swenson technique. Then comes the Eukstas technique. In this technique, we take a U-shaped metallic occlusal template. It is usually convex in form which is placed on the lower surface of the remaining natural teeth and the cusp which are not in occlusion are identified. Again these cusps are marked with a pencil and using the, this as a guide we trim off or we modify the natural dentition. The third technique is Bruce technique. In Bruce technique the maxillary and mandibular cast are mounted at an acceptable vertical dimension and a centric relation. Then modifications are made on stone cast. As the modifications are made and the proper occlusion is gained, then an acrylic resin template is fabricated on the stone cast. Here in Bruce technique, using an acrylic resin template as a guide, we alter the natural dentition till the template properly fits into the natural existing dentition. Then comes the last technique that is the Boucher's technique. In this technique, in the opposing arch, artificial porcelain teeth are arranged. Then as the porcelain has a wear resistance or uh, to the natural dentition, as it grinds over the surface of the opposing dentition, it gets into the occlusion. 
by grinding of the natural dentition stone cast with that into consideration we again see that the proper occlusion in the mouth of the patient occurs and the porcelain teeth are placed in the opposing arch and modifications are done or the trimming of the opposing arch is done in the mouth of a patient as the mouth preparation is done then we start with the impressions and jaw relations impressions of a edentulous arch is taken by taking the consideration of the state of an edentulous arch and for the dentulous arch impression is made with the irreversible hydrocolloid that may be alginate and then the casts are poured based on teeth selection teeth selection there are many materials available nowadays which can be used for selection of an artificial teeth in a single complete denture number 1 is porcelain number 2 is acrylic resin number 3 gold occlusions number 4 acrylic resin with amalgam stops and number 5 ipn resin ipn is a new form of resin that is abbreviated as interpenetrating polymer network now porcelain it maintains the vertical dimension it wears very slowly but the disadvantages are the fracture wearing and chipping of the natural teeth as as porcelain is much stronger than that of the natural teeth then it is difficult to equilibrate and it cannot be used when interocclusal distance is less less as porcelain requires much space for the interocclusal distance to get into the occlusion number 2 is acrylic resin acrylic resin advantages does not wear opposing natural teeth and it is easy to equilibrate whereas the disadvantage are as the acrylic abrades very fast so there is loss of vertical dimension and there is poor wear resistance then comes gold occlusions these are the best to oppose natural teeth as the natural teeth does not get any harm and the gold occlusal teeth also does not have any harm and disadvantage is more time consuming and very expensive then acrylic resin with amalgam stops it was recommended by winkler here the acrylic teeth after has been balanced occlusal preparations are made with the acrylic teeth and then amalgam is poured into the acrylic teeth with the eccentric movements then comes the balanced setting the balance setting is an important to achieve the eccentric balance there are four techniques used number 1 is stansbury technique which was incorporated in 1928 number 2 is wix technique which was incorporated in 1964 number 3 sherry's technique and number 4 roots technique in stansbury technique this was the first functional chew in technique here the maxillary or the mandibular occlusal rim that is the arch which has to be uh, prosthetized is trimmed buccally and lingually so that the occlusion is free in lateral movements then as we trim the rim buccally and lingually carding wax is added to there and then eccentric movements are performed as the indentations in the carding wax is seen then stone is vibrated onto the wax occlusally and then it is secured to the lower member of the articulator the denture teeth are first arranged to the lower cast of the patient teeth after the approval of the aesthetics at the trine the stone record of the lower is secured and balance in eccentric position is obtained in wix technique which was given in 1964 it is similar to stansbury technique but the fin of acrylic resin is maintained at the vertical dimension instead of compound rim the compound rim is hard so it maintains the vertical dimension whereas the carding wax is soft it produces the indentation while eccentric movements and it is soft so that the indentations or the eccentric position is incorporated whereas the carding wax or a acrylic resin is hard and it maintains the vertical dimension the third technique is sherry technique in sherry technique it uses softened wax rim with increased vertical dimension various eccentric movements are done and when the proper vertical or the accurate vertical dimension is obtained then the indentations and the rim is taken out of the mouth 
In Ruth's technique, it is similar to Stansberry technique. It is a combination of base plate wax and red counter wax. Now comes the twine, insertion and the maintenance. These are all similar to the conventional complete dentures. Now comes the complica complications of the single complete denture. There are four com three complications. Number one, combination syndrome. Number two, wear of the natural teeth. As we say in porcelain, the opposing teeth, the natural teeth gets wear off. And number three, fracture of the denture. The denture can get fractured if the acrylic is acrylic teeth or is used or the denture is not fabricated properly, then the denture can get fractured due to the opposing fixed processes or removable processes or the natural dentition. We are going to talk about combination syndrome. Combination syndrome, it occurs when the lower mandibular anterior teeth are present and the edentulous maxilla is there. So what all symptoms or what all conditions are then seen? Number one, in combination syndrome, there is bone resorption in anterior maxilla due to recurrent biting of the mandibular anterior teeth to the edentulous maxilla there is bone resorption in the anterior maxilla as there is no support from the maxillary teeth just in the whole mouth the mandibular anterior teeth are present number two papillary hyperplasia of the heart palate there is hyperplasia of the heart palate number three the maxillary tuberosity gets enlarged as there is papillary hyperplasia and there is bone resorption in anterior maxilla, so it feels as if maxillary tuberosity falls down. Number four, there is supra eruption of lower interiors as there is no guidance stop for the in lower interiors to get itself into occlusion. And there is there is all over a space in the maxilla, so the lower interiors supra erupt. Number five is the bone loss under distal extension processes. If there is a distal extension processes, then there is a bone loss also seen. Saunders in 1978 added six more additional features. Number one, loss of vertical dimension. Number two, there is occlusal plane discrepancy. Number three, there is anterior spatial repositioning of mandible. Number four, there is loss of stability and refabrication of the existing dentures. Number five, epilus fissuratum and number six periodontal problems of the remaining teeth thank you